found the awesome tutorial today we're going to be looking at the basics of SQL. So first of all, creating a table. Use this statement. Create table has to be in capital letters and then table name. Your table name must not have any spaces, otherwise it's going to be a syntax error. And then inside these brackets, you put in your field names and its data type with the commas separating each field. And then the semicolon ends the statement. To say, if I were to create a table of students and who teaches them, create table, um, let's just call it student, and then open brackets. The first field name, well, I'm going to say student ID. And I want this to be a primary key. But first of all, I want it to be an integer data type. So the name of the field and then the data type. I want this to be a primary key. And the primary key is just um, the, a field which has a unique value to that record. So primary key. That's how I make it a primary key. And if you do this, that means if you're inserting values into your table, each um, value for the primary key field must be unique. And then I separate it with a comma, indicating a new field name. Okay, and then the next field, I'm going to name it name, which will be the student name. And then let's have this a text. Data type, comma, new field name, teacher. And this data type would be text. And then close brackets and semicolon to end the statement. Now you've got the main data types for SQL, you have integer, you have text, you have numerical, which will allow you to put in a decimal. To insert values into your table, you use this statement, insert into, in capitals, and then the table name, values, in capitals and then the brackets and each comma will separate each thing you want to put in so then we'll put it in order from the first field to the second field to the third field okay so let's insert some values insert into remember the table I created had the name student values open brackets so the first field was student ID, and this has to be a primary key. So, let's say 0, 1, 0, 2, comma. The second field was a student name. So I'm going to say Bob. But that's not right. That's a syntax error, because if it is a, a text or a data type that is a word, a character, you need to put quotation marks, whether it's just one, or two. And then the teacher name, let's say Mr. Mr. Ball. Hmm? Obviously, you would have more original teacher names. And then close bracket, semicolon. If I wanted to insert another set of values, then I would do the same thing again with a new record, a new row. And if I did this statement, my table would now look like this. As you can see, I have added a record to the table. A record is just a row, but that's the technical, thing, the, that's the technical term you need to use. Here's a primary key, then the name, and then the teacher name. If I wanted to insert another row, insert, oh, this is a really bad pen, insert into the table name, which I named it student values. Let's have a new student ID 0203, no comma, sorry, and then the student name um, Fred and the teacher. Let's have the same teacher, Mr. Bob. Close bracket, semicolon. And then what would happen to my table is we'd have a new record. 
And now to look like this, with two records. Now let's see how we can update a table. Okay, say Fred's teacher is no longer Mr. Bob. It's another teacher. How do we change that value in the table without having to create a whole new table or insert a whole new set of values? Well, let's see. We use this statement, update and then the name of your table, set whatever field name you want to, uh, what, 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 the field name of where the value is that you want to change, the value you want to change it to, and then where in capitals, with your condition, because you're not going to change every value in the table, otherwise you might as well just create a new table. So, update, this is a bad pen, update. My table name was student, remember? And I'm going to change Fred's teacher to Mr. Mr. Diary, okay? Set a teacher, that's the field name, to which value? I'm going to set it to Mr. Remember your quotation marks, Mr. Diary. Where, now here is our condition. Now, there could be a million students, okay, there could be more than one student named Fred in my school. So, what can we use that is unique to Fred? The primary key, his student ID. There may be more than one student named Fred, but there is not more than one student with the same student ID because it's a primary key. So we're going to use the primary key for this condition where student ID is equal to 0 to 0, 3. Semicolon to end the statement and this should change this value to Mr. Diary. And now we're going to look at how to delete records from a table. Okay, so to delete records, use this statement. Delete in capital letters, the field name that, or the field name, how many, how many um, values from each field you want to delete for that record. Or if you want, you can use an asterisk in which case, to delete everything from that record. Or if you want certain things deleted from that record, you have the field name of where those certain, of where those of where those certain things are. <clears throat> from the name of your table, where, and then you put a condition, and then end the statement with a semicolon. So, say Bob no longer goes to my school. I want to delete him from the table. So I'm going to delete the entire of his record. So I'm going to use the asterisk. Delete asterisk from my table name is called student. Where? And this is where you put your condition. If I said where name is Bob, and if I have more than one student going to the school named Bob, it will delete all the Bobs. But I don't want to delete all the Bob, I want to delete that one Bob that I'm talking about. So we use the primary key, because that is unique to that one record. So where the student ID, that's the primary key of the table, is equal to, I remember Bob's ID is 0, 1, 0, 2. Semicolon. And that should delete his entire record from the table. And now we're going to look at making a query with SQL. So how do you make a query? Well, first of all, select in capital letters and what you want the query to give you? What do you want to see in the results after the query has been finished? So then the field name, and another field name, another field name, or if you want everything from that record, you use the asterisk. From which table you want it from? Now obviously, you can have more than one table, in which case you might have a relational database. And so you want another table, and just do a comma, and then write the name of another table. But then, which fields from which table would you want? In which case, you'd write the table name, then dot the field name from the table, which you want to show up. So, where we put in your condition, 
and then order by I'll, t I'll talk to you about that later. So let me give you an example. So here we have the student table with new records. And I want to know every student that Mr. Bob teaches. Say if this table was really, 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 really long. I would have to look through the table and each record to see which student Mr. Bob teaches. But to do this faster, I can use a query so that the results just pop up. So, what do I want? I want every student Mr. Bob teaches. So, the field name that I want is name. If you have two tables, then you would write the name of the table, student, dot, name. So then, it specifies from which table you want the thing to come up from. From which table? The table's name is student. Where? What could be my condition? Well, I want every student which Mr. Bob teaches. So the condition is going to be related to Mr. Bob. Where teacher is equal to Mr. Remember your thing is here. Mr. Bob because it is a text data type. Okay? For SQL. Order by. I want the student's names to appear in ascending order that means from the lowest to the highest but because they're not numerical but they are represented by ascii so they do have binary numbers and as it turns out the numbers at the beginning of the alphabet have lower binary values so that means if i said by ascending order then it would start from the um, first letters of the alphabet then the last letters of the alphabet so if i write order by name ASC ascending order it would give it to me in alphabetical order remember your semicolon if I wanted it in descending order then I would write DESC but I want it in ascending order now I think by default depending on what version you're using it would give it to you in ascending order, even if you don't put ASC. So, now the exam board likes to ask you um, to list the results of a, of a query that they give you. So, let's do this. We want the name field only. So, only this will come up in the results. Nothing else. Not the student ID, not the teacher name. From which table? The student table. So, it's only going to be from this table. Where teacher is Mr. Bob. Here's where you start canceling things out. Let's see. Fred, does he have Mr. Bob? No, he does not. Bob has Mr. Bob. Okay. Janice has Mrs. Bob. Nope. John has Mr. Bob. There we go. Here are the two results of the show up. Order by ascending order. So, Bob or John? Remember, it's the name. Name is ascending order. So, Bob or John? Which one, which one will appear first? Bob. Because ascending order, because they're represented by ASCII, binary numbers, it will appear in alphabetical order. So, here's the results. Bob and John. If I wrote D-E-S-C, descending order, it would be the other way around. Now, if you want not just one field to show up, you could do a comma, and say teacher in which case this will be the result mr bob uh, bob mr bob and john mr bob remember your commas to separate the fields so this has been leo sam tutor bye <laughs>